and welcome back to look at the third of our sessions now where we explore uh, studying at level three and uh, that Pomodoro technique is one I wish I knew about when I was studying it would have been so useful uh, we've got another ticker question for you now to get involved with uh, what do you need so assuming you've you've just completed level two what do you need to do to get ready to hit the ground running at level three what are your tips what is it that's going to help you get ready for level three and um, level three which is the equivalent of the third year of a campus university is the level that carries the most marks when it comes to your degree classification so two-thirds of your degree classification is determined by your level three scores so it's the most important in terms of achievement so what we're going to talk about for the next 20 minutes or so is how can you maintain your high levels and make sure that that you start off on the right foot so karen we'll come to you first um so what would you say are the biggest differences in the learning outcomes and our expectation at level three compared to level two? Well, it, it, it's more of the critical evaluation, I think, Rob. Um, so, you know, you're often asked to be more articulate in your arguments, um, often selecting material for that argument as well. You're also expected to um, do a little bit more independent study and perhaps have slightly less handholding from your tutor in that respect. So you're learning from feedback, both in terms of what they say, but also it's that real capacity to reflect on what you're doing and thinking about how that works for you. Absolutely. And I think that's the independent element is it really comes through clearly. Um, John Quill, any, what would you say, uh, so if you've got a student coming to you saying, I'm just about to start level three, what's different about it? What would you say in terms of the learning outcomes and the expectations? Yeah, I, as Karen says, it, it's about developing uh, even further as, as a critical thinker. Um, so not accepting theories at face value, um, questioning assumptions uh all all, all those kind of um areas and um you know if if you, th if you think about the questions at level two you may be being asked to use a particular theory uh to uh, elaborate some area when you get to level three it may be that you are being asked to um select an appropriate theory. So you're no longer being told this is the theory to use. You've, you're gaining this mastery of your of your subject, your discipline, which is really exciting. Um, you know, it, it doesn't just affect your studies, it affects your whole outlook on the world. You start listening to the news um, and thinking, oh yes, I understand why that's going that way. I can see this theory at work. You know, it's, it, it's really exciting. But in your assessments, you're, you're using that mastery to, you know, as I say, not, not just apply something you've been directed to apply, but to, for yourself, select what theories, what evidence um, is relevant. And even um, rather than being told, here's a problem, um, you might be being asked to identify the problems and then select the theories. So, so you really are becoming much more expert in, in your discipline by the time you get to level three. Absolutely, and it's that independent use of the tools that you've been developing over the, the previous uh, two levels. It's, it's been able to identify which tools are useful in which situations. And um, I, I know in the, in the business school at level two we really want to see how students do analysis and draw conclusions actually at level three i'm less worried about how they do the analysis it's more about what do they do with the conclusions so it's almost as though you've, you've shown us that you can do analysis you've shown us that you can use models and frameworks what we now want you to show us is that you can take the outputs of that analysis and do something useful, something defensible with it. 
So how are you using your conclusions to present and defend an argument? How are you coming up with recommendations and how are you defending those? And the, the critical thinking, so critical evaluation is looking from multiple perspectives. And I, you, you've both mentioned not taking things at a face value. At level one, we present ideas and <laughs> theories as though they are finished elements. At level three, we're actually asking your students to say, well, consider when this theory was created, consider the context in which it was created. What was it created for? And then we're asking, is it still applicable for your purpose? Or do you now have to adjust it? And goodness me, we allow students to modify and adapt theories to be suitable. So really good students will take an idea, concept or theory and modify it and use it in a new uh, relevant way for the problem they have. And rather than that just being something that's wrong, that's what we want. That's the critical thinking. How can we take what we've learned and turn this tool into something really useful? So um, when it comes to level three, how have the questions changed? What are the types of questions that you tend to find coming out? So over to you first, Karen. What sorts of questions do you find you're asking at level three compared to the other levels? Well, it can be very broad and I'm sort of mindful that we're, we're kind of talking about a lot of essay questions here. And, you know, for some mm -hmm. students, they may not have an essay. They may have to do a report or a critical analysis or or um, short answer questions or something entirely different. But I think, Rob, what you were saying is is um, it, it's a little bit more about, you know, to what extent and really thinking about yeah. the extent to which some of those theories meet some of those ideas. We often talk about, you know, strengths and limitations, and very often we can kind of name those. You know, for example, um, a laboratory study may be said to have low ecological validity. It may not apply to the real world. Um, and so it's very limited in that sense. But sometimes, for example, if we're looking at um, reaction times to alcohol in a driving simulator, we can't go into a real world. So that's all we can kind of have. So while it may have that limitation, it's not very sophisticated, I guess, to say, well, <laughs> it's limited within that in mind. So we'd be expecting students at level three to kind of think about the extent to which, say, for example, we're looking at the effects of alcohol on attention. We'd be looking at the various studies and thinking about what they contribute, how much they contribute, which um, aspects of the particular question they can account for and can't account for, perhaps which evidence can align with some of those theories as well. So not just the theoretical content in itself, but the course material or even external um, material that you found um, from the OU uh, library that can sort of back up um, and support or, or even refute some of those claims. So it's about that sophistication, not just matching this is good and it can't account for that, but why it can't account. And as we've sort of said before, really thinking about how much those theories really hold, what people were trying to find out by creating them, what they were testing. And even though it looks perfectly lovely in a book or, or online to be able to say they were testing this, does it really test that? Does that really say much about the phenomenon under investigation? Yeah, absolutely. And it's, uh, I, I know in my modules, the we, re, we encourage students to think about the assumptions they are making. What assumptions are you putting in place as you're writing this on? And rather than just ignore the assumptions, explain the impact that they have and, and where they fit in. Um, the other thing we're finding business as well, that at level three, the questions are a lot shorter. <laughs> the actual questions we get asked are, um, a fraction of the length of the questions at level one. And that's because you, you're given a lot more freedom to explore and to choose. So the guidance is shorter, the questions are shorter. And one of the things we're looking for is how have you taken this instruction and interpreted it and applied it? Another thing I quite like is the fact that in business, quite often, there isn't a right or wrong answer. Um, st students can argue completely opposite things and get full marks because it's less about the answer you get, you come out with, 
more about how you get there and how you've justified it. So two completely different answers can still score very marks. Uh, sorry, very good marks. Um, is that your experience as well, John? Have you, have you got that ability to um, to basically mark contradictory things very well? <laughs> Yes, you. I mean, you. Uh, as a, as a tutor, you're you're now looking at the quality of argument, um, the the logic in the ar arguments, those those kind of issues. So, it, you know, it doesn't have to lead to the conclusion that that I maybe would have myself um, a well argued, um, different interpretation is just as valid. Um, you know, by level three, you're becoming expert. In, in the subject, um, so uh, your your views are as well informed as as mine. Uh, so it, it's it's the the quality of the arguments that you present. It's also about the way you synthesize evidence. Um, it's about perhaps the type of evidence you use as well. I'm thinking particularly subjects like history by level three you're maybe using primary sources more, whereas at earlier levels, you might have been using somebody else's interpretation of those primary sources. So there are quite a lot of uh, differences. Um, we, we've talked about um, having that choice of theory. We haven't really talked about methods. Um, mm -hmm. Very often, you'll be using, by level three, more sophisticated uh, tools. So in my subject, economics, um, at level one and two, you might be using charts to display um, some time series you know, data, you know, what's what's been happening to the world. But by level three, you may be using um, statistical techniques that we call econometrics. Um, and again, you have quite a lot of freedom as to which uh, methods of uh, analysis are appropriate to use in that particular question you're, you're answering. So much more choice, uh, much more um, self-direction, much more critical approach. Yeah, absolutely. And in, in the business school, for example, we at level one, we would give students an extract of a, uh, an annual report from a company and ask them to investigate it at level three we would tell them to go and find a range of reports from the company and depending which ones they choose their approach will be slightly different and exactly the same the students choose how to approach the question but that's a, that's a um, that's not a negative that's something that is built into the way we then assess because we're looking at how you've approached it and how you've taken it on board so Jacob, have we got any questions, any thoughts in the chat box at the moment? Anything that uh, students want to know? I think we've got uh, some different experiences of uh, level three in the chat, which is really interesting to read about. So Michelle says, I think at level three, you really need to step up your game. Um, Marie's a bit worried about getting uh, a new chief as uh, sometimes they have different approaches, different styles. And I always say when I get the tutor's details, I always send them off a quick email, maybe just to say my background, why I'm studying. And then you kind of get an idea. They may respond to you back or you can ask them, when do you like to be contacted? Can I call you or is it best to email? And you kind of work out the kind of style they have as well. And that gives them a good impression of you as well, how you work and um, what's best for you. And it's always good to raise things ahead of time as well. Um, we've got some good tips as well about uh, how to prepare for level two. Andrew's got a fantastic one, taking the time to read the feedback from level two, because it may be that good to have that reminder, or you may not have addressed everything because you've got lots of good feedback and things to look at and work on. So having spending some time going through that feedback can really help. And uh, Maureen's got a, a good one as well. Read around the subject before study. This is uh, not something, as we discussed, you have to do. But uh, I know for me personally, if I'm studying something, I find it much easier if I can relate it to something 
um, physical or something that I've done before. So if I'm uh, studying around a certain subject, I may watch like a YouTube video around it. And then when I'm actually get into it in the materials, I'll click and remember it a bit more easier. So it's whatever works for you. And uh, Kirsty's got a great one for level three. Always read the advice in the booklets for TMA. So even though you've done lots of TMAs <laughs> by the time you're reaching level three, it's always good to remind yourself and reinforce the things that you need to know and the instructions, because there might be slightly different instructions. You might have advice on approach that you haven't done before. So always read, although we've done lots of TMAs, always read the advice in the booklets. And if not, ask your teacher to clarify things if you're unsure, because that's the way to... Uh, success is to prepare yourself really well for that although i'm not the most prepared person as we all know but uh there are some good advice about preparation here but yeah if you've got any more advice for your fellow students we'd love to hear it um one big one was uh using the uh ou library um training session so uh cat posted the link mm -hmm. to it very grateful for everyone posting things in the chat they've got these great sessions on uh using the library for research on referencing and lots of other areas that you'd probably find useful so uh yeah definitely have a look i attended um i attended two on referencing so the same subject and there's <laughs> nothing wrong with that because i was really trying to get my head around it all so uh yeah there's lots of support and advice and uh yeah share uh, what's working for you or what you're worried about and uh yeah, we've got some great tips going in the chat as well. Uh, absolutely. And uh, most modules have got uh, some of the content is on Open Learn. So if you've got yes. a module coming up, search Open Learn <laughs> and see if your next module has got a section on there so you can get a taste before you start. Uh, totally agree about um, the tutor. So first of all, tutors always mark to the same standard and we are uh, there's lots of processes in place to make sure that we're fair and equal. But allegedly, tutors are human. And that means that we all have our own little slight preferences and ways of doing things. So it's uh, nothing that's going to significantly impact your marks. But you might find as you move towards, uh, move from one tutor to another, they, they might have a particular thing they're keen on. So with me, it's referencing. If you're in my group, get your referencing right. Uh, for other students, it's about grammar and spelling that they really hop on. But these are sort of some of the minor elements that um, are differences between tutors. But all of the key things, all of the key assessments are the same as we move forwards. Uh, so Karen, when it comes to level three, what types of questions and what types of skills are we seeing at level three compared to the others? So how how would a question be worded, do you think? Well, I think much like sort of we've sort of touched on before, it's those things around the, you know, critically evaluate, compare and contrast. Um, so, so things are more complex. I think then that, that some students can kind of say, like we've talked about the extent to which you're, you're a little bit more on your own here in terms of the decisions you need to make. So sometimes um, it may be a case of thinking, well, should I have this approach or that approach? Or many students will often say, is it best to include this or that? How can I get the best marks? And I think it really is about going back to that question and thinking about coherence. And for me, it's all yeah. about creating a strong, coherent, well-supported argument, explaining in your introduction, if it's an essay, for example, the parameters of what you're going to include, why those things are so important, how all of those things relate back to the question, how the evidence is supporting the claim, and, and really being able to move through. It doesn't really matter which kind of approach you use. For example, sometimes in a comparison and contrast essay, we might suggest to students you could have a this or a that approach. Um, and, and again, it doesn't really matter as long as there's that flow and coherence. So I think it's really about planning those arguments and feeling confident in the extent to which your answer is really delivering on those questions. And that's why, you know, as people are saying in the chat, reading that guidance is just so important because it gives you an idea about what areas you should include and also how you should cover those things in your answer. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I don't think we can emphasize the guidance enough. Um, I, I'm sure as, as, as tutors, we've all had students who've come to us with questions and they've asked us questions. Says, Have you read the guidance? There's, oh, no, I haven't got time for that. <laughs> and the answers are there. And 
a, a lot of the things that we, a lot of advice that we give as tutors is almost word for word from the guidance or from the help center. So those are available to you already. Um, so yes, so yeah, some, some really interesting points in how we ask the questions and what we're expecting students to do. And for me, the, the way I interpret coherence as you talk about is, I want an assignment that doesn't feel like lots of stepping stones where a student is jumping from one place to another to another. Now, we might get that at level one and that's okay. Level two, we start to see it flow together. But at level three, we're expecting the whole assignment to effectively be a, a single item that flows nicely. It doesn't feel like lots of separate things stitched together and, and dropped in. And that's what we're really looking for. So John Quill, from you then, any, any tips you'd like to give anybody starting level three? So if somebody's out there about to start level three, what would you say to them to get ready for their module in uh, September or October? I, I loved the suggestion from the chat about, about reading around the subject uh, before you start. You know, we, we, we do get quite a lot of uh, queries from students saying, is there any reading I can do? Uh, to prepare. And that's certainly the sort of um, question you might want to post on the forum on the subject site. Um, but I'd also flag up if if reading doesn't float your boat, you know, there's there's um, there's now a fantastic website called Learn on Screen, which has got um, the OU's co-productions with the BBC. So you can watch material that's relevant to your um, your subject area or, or next module. And there are also um, a lot of um, podcasts, both audio and video um, on online as well um, on the uh, iTunes site. So there, there, there are lots of ways that you can kind of keep in touch with your, your subject um, as, you, as you approach uh, level three. But I quite take you know, what Karen said earlier, that it's not essential to do this work between modules. And often it's just as beneficial to clear your mind and have a break, both mental and physical. Um, you know, that can be as good preparation for level three uh, as, as anything. And then once you start level three, you've got all those additional resources there, like the help center, um, if you need them. And, you know, I can't stress enough what you've been saying throughout, Rob, that your tutor is there. If you're struggling with this jump between the levels, then talk to your tutor and do it early because they will have lots of ideas to help you uh, adjust to the new level. Uh, you can even have a special session with your tutor, you know, looking at specific areas that you're struggling with. So always, always ask your tutor for help. Oh, definitely. And, and my level three students got their results yesterday. And I love getting the results and reading through and saying, look, they did it. You know, because we, we know the students where we've had to put the extra effort in or where they were struggling with. Things. And, you know, they seeing the achievement, you know, we'd like to share in your achievement. And uh, that's what they're there for. Uh, Jacob, any comments, any last comments from the chat? What are, uh, what's being said in the chat at the moment? So last time we get to see them. Yeah, just a, a extra tip from uh, Suzanne, which I think is really good. Uh, Suzanne says, I always watch the recorded tutorials so that I can pa uh, pause and replay. And I'm very much like that as well. I'll sit in a tutorial and I'll think it's brilliant, but <laughs> by the end of it, I haven't written enough uh, notes to remember anything or there's some bits I thought, oh, I remember they said that, but I've completely forgotten it. So do remember that you have the options to do these things as well, because it's all about your study and how it works for you. So if going back and recorded tutorial works, certainly do that. And all of our sessions as well are on our YouTube channel. Just search Student Hub Live and you'll find lots of great stuff there as well. And this session will be 
um, up there shortly as well. And uh, Laura, I think if I was going to go for sort of a final comment from the chat, Laura says, one thing which I try and do is celebrate submitting a TMA and EMA rather than result because she's celebrating the effort that I put in. And I think that's important to remember mm -hmm. is to celebrate every step that we're taking because it's all a journey. It's all progress from starting off reading a chapter, uh, trying to understand it, answering activities to um, actually submitting the TMA and getting back. It's all something to celebrate because it's work that we're doing to um, build our knowledge and skills that we're gaining as well. But um, as a general point, I'd like to thank everyone in the chat. We've had so many great things shared, lots of tips and advice, which is absolutely fantastic. And uh, Matt and Sinead have been absolutely brilliant. If there's anything that we haven't covered and you think of after, do just email us studenthub at open.ac.uk and we'd love to get back to you as well but uh, I'm just really looking forward to hearing more about how people are doing and uh, I'm sure we'll see everyone again at our next workshops or live sessions. Oh, thank you Jacob that's fantastic and uh, yeah so just to remind you of the session today so we started off looking at level one and um, the, the focus on developing those HE study skills and building up your confidence and your knowledge. Level two, developing your practice and your ability to use the ideas. And then we come to level three with the, the more independent, critical approach where we're starting to see you taking control of the things that you're talking about. Uh, there is a step up between each level. Be aware of it. Don't be scared of it, but be aware of it. And then just be aware that what was excellent at level one isn't going to be excellent at level two. There is that step up and make sure you know what's required. So read the learning outcomes, read the questions, make sure you know what's expected of you. Uh, I'd just like to give a big thank you to John Quill and Karen for joining me today. I've really appreciated you being here. That's, it's been a, I've enjoyed this, uh, this session in the chat and I really appreciate your time today. And um, for Matt and Sinead in the chat box, thank you. It uh, sounds like you've given some really good advice there. Uh, and Jacob, it's been lovely working with you again. And uh, thank you for joining us today. So I'd just like to finish with a shout out to a couple of sessions we've got coming up. On the 15th of August, we've got um, a session on applying other people's ideas. Then we've got, for those of you who've got exams in September or EMAs in September, 22nd of August, we've got a session on preparing for your final assessment. And on the 5th of September, a session on managing your time better. Then we get back to our freshers weeks, which start again towards the end of September, mainly aimed for our new students who are joining us um, in October, but everybody is welcome. We love to see those of you who've been with us through the year, come and join us for freshers and welcome the new students um, with us. So thank you everyone. And a reminder that there is a feedback form that we'd like you to uh, complete. We want to know what you think of this session. Do you want more like it? Do you want this one repeated? Um, you drive what we do on Student Hub Live and it's only through your feedback that we know what we need to do. So please complete the feedback form. I think the link will be in the chat, but also it's on the website. And if you're watching the recording as well, um, your feedback is very much appreciated. So not just if you're in the session live, but if you're in the uh, watching the recordings. So thank you, everyone. It's been a fantastic day and I've really enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you at the next one. So thank you and goodbye.